The Ronin 4D is a camera oddity. In our previous review, we said some great things about it, and some not so kind things as well. But after owning it for more than a year, we wanted to take a moment to re-examine the Ronin 4D. Because it is the best specialized tool for some, but something to stay away for for others. So after one year, here's 10 things we love, hate, and wanted to share about the Ronin 4D. First, some context as why we want to make this episode. When we review cameras, we take them out on shoots and make our own content with them to be able to give you an accurate review. And we liked the Ronin 4D well enough to keep it, which allowed us to take it on a bunch of other commercial and documentary shoots where it was a perfect fit. And then we had a week where we had a six shoot days over the course of eight days in five different cities. And as a cinematographer, it makes you think of one thing. How the f am I gonna do this? So we created a gear list based on the production needs and the limits of our logistics. It would be three different productions, an event capture, a social media shoot, and a mini documentary. All of them with a need for specialized and stabilized motion. We would be running a crew of about three for most of it, and traveling via car and plane. This means we needed a lightweight package and cameras that could be carried onto a plane. And this is what we ended up taking, giving us the opportunity to intimately know this camera that only countless shoot hours can as well as compare it to our Sony FX3, which is what we normally would take on a gimbal and take for these shoots. So after a year, here are the 10 things we love, hate, and tips we've found using the Ronin 4D. First, the things we love. The Ronin 4D is a gimbal with a camera, compared to a camera on a gimbal. It is a great gimbal, and once you dial in your settings correctly, it can be a tool that can create seamless movement, something akin to a Dolly Jib or a Movi Pro. We found that we got the best results when we really dialed down the speed on our settings and made the response time rather slow. This made our footage smoother, but the trade-off is that we sometimes lost our subject if the movement was too fast. Like a gimbal, it doesn't handle side-to-side -side movements too well, but motion stabilization usually takes care of these micro movements as long as you stay in a medium close-up. When you get to a close-up, those horizontal micro movements become more noticeable. So just be careful to move in a straight line on any shots that require dollying or booming. You will constantly need to change the Z-axis mode depending on your move. If you anticipate changing the height of the move at all, you need to be in follow mode. If you want to just run, follow someone, or have the camera float in a scene, set your height of the camera and move to lock mode. Lock mode is best for orbits, aka the Michael Bay shots. The Ronin 4D shines in opportunities when you can get in the action. So get in the action. We took the Ronin 4D on ice, on courts, and on fields, and it honestly was a joy to operate. With a massive screen, we were able to make changes on the fly that we probably wouldn't be able to make as quickly on our FX3 on a gimbal. And thanks to that massive screen, we are able to reframe and re-expose quickly. Being able to swap lenses in under a minute on the Ronin compared to the two or three minutes on a gimbal, that was a huge benefit, which was super important because our time was at the mercy of the events we were at. The Ronin 4D excels in open hallways, staircases, and for that grand reveal shot of a room. However, if you're going to do a pan around the room, here's a quick tip. Don't use your feet. Position your body towards the center of the room and start with the gimbal a little bit higher than normal. Then rotate your entire body so that the move is done with an entirely stable trunk. You have a smooth, even movement. Add a little bit of a rise or fall to give your footage a little bit of a flourish. When you want to do a slow dolly on something, it's best not to step towards your subject as that can create some lateral micro movements. If you can, try to push your camera towards your subject, as if you were slowly pushing someone on a swing. If you want to simulate a floating experience in your footage, go to FPV mode. That created a really fun floating nature to some of our footage that felt really stylized and create a really sporty, intimate look. Here's the bad. Running audio is still a pain and more nerve wracking than it should be. Now, the truth be told, I often go overboard on my audio needs across all the shoots I'm on. If we have a mixer on set, we're running both a boom and a lav, and they're running a line into my camera as well as captioning on their own. And everything is time code sunk, and I'm still running an onboard mic if I can. I go overboard for this reason and this reason only. I can only capture good audio once. With the Ronin 4D, I don't feel comfortable just jam syncing time code once and hoping it doesn't drift on me. I have only one line in and the onboard mic itself, the integrated one, is unusable professionally. That's why for our interviews, we actually brought and used the FX3. But then again, DJI came out with an XLR adapter that is perfect for the situation, 
but I still wish I didn't have to buy an additional adapter to get the results I wanted. The DJI LiDAR system is good, but it's not the best. And we don't think you should rely on it if you're capturing an interview, and it's something that you should be wary of if you're pulling focus in a sports situation. Now, we found that it did hold its own for most things we threw at it, but there are a couple of situations where it kind of freaked out on us and we had better results just going to manual focus and pulling by eye. If we were to rebuy this camera, we'd probably buy one with the SSD. Having that extra frame rate options and those extra codecs are kind of really helpful and something that we miss right now without the SSD. Low light situations leave a lot to be desired, and D-Log is a color slice that leaves a little bit more to be desired. When well lit and well exposed, D-Log creates some great looking footage that can mix well with reds and sonys. Anything you do expose dark also has a little bit more saturation that just isn't able to be lifted out without some heavy lifting. If you can, expose as far right as you could without blowing out your highlights. After owning this camera for more than a year, who would we recommend this to? Well, we really recommend it to sports videographers, those who want a cheaper Moby Pro kit, and for those who are looking for a car rig solution that's all in one. For those who are looking for this to be their only camera. My back, oh, my back. It might be better to pair this camera off as a B cam or to look at a different camera solution with a gimbal. For those in the documentary world, know that the Ronin 4D can open up a new world of movement, but doesn't offer quite the one man band option that you would be able to find in other camera solutions. Overall, we really like the DJI. It's a fun camera. It's an innovative camera, but it's not the best camera out there if it's your only camera. And it's really only a camera you need if you are doing a specialized job. The Ronin 4D is DJI's moon landing to truly innovate against decades of thinking on what a camera could be. And they truly innovated. Think about all the products that came out of this endeavor that are now great products by themselves. The DJI LiDAR system, the DJI video transmission kit, and the DJI camera control for their DJI Ronin gimbals. The Ronin 4D is a system that can only improve after each iteration. They added a 17 to 28 powered zoom. They just went out and put out the Ronin 4D with an 8K Zenmu sensor and gimbal. Imagine where they can go next. Thanks for joining us on this episode of Beyond the Specs. Like, subscribe, and comment down below what you guys think they should do next with the Ronin 4D. And as always, take care. Peace.